Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Sokoni Triumph 17s and how they went with my elbows. these uh, Sukoni Triumph 17s with my own money, um, reviewing them just because I think uh, it could help because out there I don't see many people wearing orthotics like this and sharing their thoughts on different shoes and because there is a fairly significant difference between this and a regular insole, it can cause a bit of difference and I think this shoe highlights what it can do. So. Uh, just to get started, a few stats on the shoe. It has a 10 mil heel to toe drop. It's, what's it got? So 34 millimeters in the heel and 24 millimeters in the toe. So when I weighed it on the scales with the orthotics in, it weighs about 405 grams, which is about 10 grams less than a pair of Adidas Ultra Boost 20s. I bought this for long runs, okay? Um, it's an ultra cushioned shoe, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more about um, how that impacts and it, the whole idea behind this was to get something a little bit softer that I could do my long runs and my easy runs in. I paid $150 for this on the OnSport website, I think it was. Right now, these are uh, retailing because the 18 has, the Sakoni Triumph 18 has come out, they're retailing for about $180 in Australia. Um, you can pick them up fairly regularly though for that 150 mark now that the newer version's out. Reason why I'm sharing my review with these now is because if you're in Australia, the price of shoes is absolutely astronomical. Now, if you're someone who runs all the time and is running for more than just fitness and being able to do stuff, so if you're in that semi-elite category, you don't mind spending 250, 280, 300 plus dollars on a pair of shoes. For the regular everyday runner, a bloke who does you know, eight to 10 Ks, uh, half an hour in the morning before he goes to his full-time job, we can't justify spending that much. So buying year old technology like these is a good option. So I've done about 120 Ks so far in these. Um, so I've got a pretty good idea of how they're looking. I bought it because like I said earlier, I wanted something with that little bit more cushion, a little bit more structure, a little bit more um, of everything for the longer runs. I'm working really hard on protecting my feet after injuring my foot earlier this year. I think it's really important that I do that work to protect them. So I picked these up actually completely differently to the way I would normally pick up a pair of shoes. A friend just said they're the best pair of shoes for a long run, do it, recommended them, saw them on special, so I just snapped them up straight away based off his recommendation. Normally I'll do a little bit more uh, a little bit more research into that. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I liked about this shoe. First of all, the uh, Power Run Plus midsole, okay? It's got what's called this Power Run Plus midsole. It's pretty much exclusive to the Sulcone Triumph, I think. If the idea is that it's a little bit softer than the Power Run that they put in most of their other shoes, okay? And it's basically designed to be that cushion and that plush. And you'll notice too, if you can see inside there, there's a little bit more of that power run in the top, uh, just at the top part of the inside of the shoe, makes it that little bit more comfortable underneath. And as far as things I like, it was super comfortable to run in. I love the midsole in this, especially the slight rocker that they've got going on. Not a ho uh, Hoka style rocker, but one that's enough to just get your legs ticking over. And that's really, really handy on those long runs. Okay, something else that I liked uh, is the fact that there is plenty of rubber on the bottom. Okay. It's crystallized rubber, so what that means is most shoes go for the blown rubber on the bottom, which is the traditional rubber that we're used to seeing on the bottom. If these guys have gone with crystallized rubber, it means it's a little bit harder, a little bit more durable, okay? But there's heaps of it, 
okay? This is done 120 Ks and you can barely see any sort of wear. There's some slight signs of wear here where I toe off, but that's it. So this shoe is gonna last for ages, okay? Dislikes. This is where it gets ugly. And unfortunately with this shoe, I do have a lot of things that I dislike about it, okay? If I could f afford to go out and you know, waste $150 on a pair of shoes and get rid of them, I probably wouldn't run in these anymore. I'm really not a huge fan, okay? The big thing, with this shoe, when they design it, and I know a lot of other reviewers have said it, and they said it early on, now that I've had a look at those reviews, is that when they were designing this shoe, it's like they thought of every possible thing they could do to make it cushioned, throw it on there, and just not edit at all. Okay, it's like they forgot how to use their eraser with this. There is like half an inch of foam around the heel. You don't need half an inch of cushioning around the heel, okay? The gusseted tongue, fantastic. I love a gusseted tongue. It makes you feel soft and secure, but most gusseted tongues have a stretchy material, like a lycra or elastic sort of uh, stretch to attach the tongue. They've just used their mesh from the outside it doesn't stretch at all. It just holds onto your foot. So when you shove an orthotic in there like this, it just compounds on that front of your foot there. The tongue is just way too thick. There's just too much shoe going on. When you're running and you look down, it's like that cheap old pair of school shoes that you used to run around in when you were about eight. Next thing that I'm not a fan of, okay? The crystallized rubber on the bottom. While it's fantastic, it's durable, and there's heaps of it, and I love that side of it, the fact that there's heaps of it. Unfortunately, the crystallized rubber is really slippery in any sort of wet conditions. Now, I live uh, at the top of a hill in a tropical uh, climate, so we get a lot of rain, and I mean a lot of rain. Even when it thinks, looks cloudy, the clouds come over the hill, we get dumped with a bit of rain. It ends up very slippery on the roads. This does not help me. Trying to get up and down those hills of the morning, okay, if there's any hint of rain, it just, it slips and slides. So I know with the 18, they've gone back to the blown rubber, which I think is an awesome choice. Third thing that I don't like is that my foot goes numb straight away in these shoes, okay? It has taken me, and it took me about 80 Ks to figure out how to put the shoe on in a way that my foot doesn't go numb in the first two Ks. The problem is, like I was talking a little bit about before, with the tongue, with that gusseted tongue, it, there's no give there. There's absolutely no give. The overlays that you've got going on over this mesh upper, there's just no give there, okay? You strap it onto your foot and it's just too tight, which is great if you want that secure feeling. But if you've got a problem with your feet going numb and you, you need that ability to adjust it, there's just, they've tried too hard to put too much cushioning into it and it's just turned into a frustrating shoe. Before my final thoughts, durability, I hinted at it earlier, this is gonna last a really long time. There's no signs of wear whatsoever. I'm probably gonna get, normally I would get somewhere between five and 600 Ks out of a pair of shoes. I'm pretty hard on shoes, but I can see with this, I'm gonna get closer to the 800 Ks out of it. So I'm stuck with it for a while. Um, I had intended to use it for my recovery runs as well as my long runs, but I just don't, I don't want to put it on. I wear it for the long runs because the uh, midsole is quite comfortable and it is protecting the bottom of my foot well, but I'm just not a fan of it. I'm stuck with it. I will use it for that 800 Ks until the midsole dies, but we'll, I'm not going to enjoy it. The final question, would I buy the shoe again? No, and I won't buy the 18. I do know with the 18, they've addressed some of the issues. I know that they've uh, addressed this ridiculous amount of padding around the heel and all of the whatnot going on here, that there's just way too much of all of that sort of stuff. And I know that they've gone back from the crystallized rubber to a blown rubber. So I think they're both good positive moves, but I've just had too bad an experience with this shoe. Okay, I'm not going to spend $250 because that's what they they retail for in Australia on the 18. If you didn't wear orthotics, I think this shoe would be okay. But there again, you've got to go in and try it on and get that lockdown right and know that you can get that lockdown right without it being uncomfortable. 
Okay, so they're my thoughts on the Sorconi Triumph 17. Okay, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, if you've had a similar experience or a different experience, love to hear your thoughts. And uh, let me know if you found this useful. Thanks for watching right through to the end, guys. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. That really helps me out to know that I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing. Okay, thanks, guys. See you later.